Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs. Hello, my name is Sandra Grasse, and I'm a licensed acupuncturist. Welcome to another one of the special editions where I bring you an expert, introduce them to you, and we just get to have a nice chat. It's not really an interview, it's a nice, relaxed conversation um, with relevant information for you. And, and in this particular case, this is going to be as yes, for the public, because I always say that the vlog posts are for the are for the public. There is going to be a good bit of information for practitioners as well, but the um, I, I will try to break that down and have it in different different sections so that uh, um, I, I can make it noted on, on the title what's going to be for the public and what's going to be for the practitioners. So today I am so so proud to be able to introduce to you a good friend of mine. Um, he has done a tremendous amount of work and has a few very very exciting projects in hand at the moment and we are going to go from cold Ireland all the way to sunny South California and uh, talk to Matthew Bauer. Matthew is the president of the Acupuncture Now Foundation and a, a lot of you will know from their educational videos, from their, their white papers that they've published before, tremendous amount of work. Um, I would really recommend that you go on their website. It's acupuncturenowfoundation.org. Um, I will leave all the links below and as I said, Matthew's a good friend. He agreed to come on and, and just be on split screen. He's just waiting now, and we're going to have a nice chat. So without any further ado, let's go to split screen and have a chat with Matthew. Okay, so here we are with Matthew Bauer, president of the Acupuncture Now Foundation. Matthew, thank you so, so much for taking the time to talking to us. The, uh, um, it, it's great to have you here. So can you just uh, um, talk about the Acupuncture Now Foundation? Well, some of us know it's a great project, but in your own words, can you talk us through the, uh, the great work that you do? Well, thank you, first of all, uh, Sandro, uh, for having me here and everybody else for, for watching. The, we actually are coming right up on our two-year anniversary from when we launched the Acupuncture Now Foundation. It was in November two years ago. And the, the primary driving idea behind the ANF is that the acupuncture community has never really mounted a comprehensive public education campaign. And I, I use the term public education campaign rather than a PR campaign, uh, or it could be called a, a, a communications outreach campaign, whatever words people want to use. And when I say the public, it, it, it's really in the three different areas. The general public, other healthcare providers, and health policymakers. And our goal is to gather support, including you know, experts and, and, and people passionate about educating others about acupuncture, and, uh, and to gather financial support to do really comprehensive campaigns uh, about helping people understand what acupuncture can do, about acupuncturists, their training, and also about the research going on behind acupuncture. We have a particular interest in research because we believe there's been a lot of problems with both the way uh, acupuncture research has been conducted and is being interpreted. So we want to be the kind of the organization that really zeroes in on the issue of helping people understand what acupuncture can do and what acupuncturists can do and to work with other existing acupuncture organizations uh, to help them meet their goals in public outreach. Mm. Yeah, because I know you have plenty of information on, the, on your website, and I'll leave the links here as well for everyone to go and check, but you have plenty of information actually for, for the public. So it doesn't even have to be you know, for someone that has had acupuncture before or knows what it is. You have pretty good information there, like your, your educational videos, for people to actually know what uh, what acupuncture is and it's much better to hear it from the professionals rather than just to you know as we all joke about dr google and then find out mm -hmm. what it is and what it isn't right. Right. So, on, on, on that can i just ask you because we did that on, on one of the previous interviews if you were talking to someone for the first time and you know you say that you're an acupuncturist and you do, you do acupuncture and someone asks you oh acupuncture 
How does that work? What would be your answer? Well, I, I always like it, for example, when I'm doing a consultation with a new patient that's never had acupuncture before, because a lot of times people will ask me if there's medicine in our needles. <laughs> and and yeah. I always answer back, no, the medicine is in your body. Mm. The needles help your body to make that medicine. And in the vast majority of cases, it's just like a light bulb goes off. People say, oh, okay, now I get it. And now some people may want more information. How do the needles do that? But you see, what I've long believed, and, and this is from 30 years of doing many, many consultations with people that have never had acupuncture before and testing all of these explanations out over time. But what I think we overlook in our community, in the acupuncture community, is the idea that you could have a therapy whose goal it is, is to spark the resources already in the body. That's something that's not even in people's minds. Mm -hmm. It's not like they think, oh, well, one type of therapy is we bring new resources in like drugs or surgery or physical manipulation. And then the other therapy is we spark the resources in the body. People don't think about that other yeah. way of doing it. So that's, that's one of our biggest educational hurdles that we have to get over is people are, have never been subjected to the idea of a therapy that helps the body to better help itself. Mm -hmm. So that is, is what I believe is the number one bit of information that if we can help people to believe that it's actually possible mm -hmm. to squeeze more good out of what nature gave us, if we can penetrate that barrier of misunderstanding, <clears throat> uh, then it just, the floodgates open up. Yeah. I mean, what person wouldn't want to, to somehow squeeze more good out of what their bodies could do for them. Yeah. That's, that's like a no-brainer. Yeah. And that is the truth about the way acupuncture works. Whether you take the, you know, the, the Western neurophysiological idea of acupuncture or you take a traditional qi-based explanation, mm -hmm. what, is, what is freeing up stuck qi and balancing yin and yang qi? It's helping to get more good out of what nature gave us. Yeah. Yeah. It, however you look at it, that's, that's where, that is the essence of what we do. And yeah. that's also something that people have never been subjected to. It's funny because <clears throat> I'm talking to you now about this and thinking, we, the interview with Yvonne Farrell, we talked about this again, you know, that, that the potential of the body, you know, the body is going to do it. And <clears throat> for years in, in the clinic, I know you're talking about 30 years and we're just coming up. I was talking to Siobhan about the, um, it's coming up to 10 years that we're in practice and going, into, <laughs> going into double digits just makes you feel yeah. old. <laughs> <laughs> but we were saying at, at the start, it was so, it was so difficult for us to try and say it to people, oh, sorry, not, not for us to say it, but for people to kind of, you always get that look of what do you mean the body healing itself? That just doesn't make any sense. And throughout right. the years, and because of doing a little bit of lecturing, as, and, and as you say, you, you start to, you almost like you test your theories in the way that you say it to people. In right. the and a lot of the times I found myself saying, well, when, when you cut yourself, so if you get, if you get a cut in your skin, like the right. skin, now you have blood and you clean it up, and what do you do to heal it? Like, what is it that you then think that happens to heal it? And people will go, well you keep it clean and if it, you know you might need this and you might need that and i said well even the stitches they're just there to keep it together and then the healing will happen right it's your body doing it so right. some that was that light bulb moment that you were talking about that's sometimes what we get then with people going oh now i get it oh yeah the body of course the body can do it but well, one time, thing i would add to that uh, uh, sandro is that there's one other piece of information there that people often need to find it credible. And that is, when you cut your finger, it, it happens automatically and spontaneously. And people will tend to think that they're already getting everything out of what their body can do to heal themselves because it's an automatic thing. Yeah. But what I tell people when I do these uh, consultations is, and I'm explaining it in this way, you know, I'll tell them, um, just because you 
your body is constantly monitoring itself and constantly responding to every perceived threat to its well-being, even though that happens automatically and spontaneously and you don't have to direct it yourself, the fact is we don't automatically and spontaneously get 100% out of what our bodies could do for us all the time. Mm. Just like we don't automatically get 100% out of what our brains could do for us or what our muscles could do for us. And when I say that, when I especially say about your, what your brains can do for you, mm -hmm. they automatically, oh, everybody's agreeing. Because everybody knows they're not getting everything out of what their brains could do for them, mm -hmm. right? So just because nature gave us a brain doesn't mean we're automatically and spontaneously getting 100% out of what our brains could do for us. Mm -hmm. So the, it's really those two pieces of information. One, acupuncture helps by sparking the body to do a better job to help itself. and we almost never get 100% out of the good that our bodies could do for us. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's the niche that acupuncture is. Mm -hmm. Therefore, acupuncture tries to help the body get closer to 100% out of what it could do for itself. Mm -hmm. We can't make it go beyond what the natural limit is. We can't make the body do something it was never designed to do, but we never automatically get a hundred percent out of what the body is designed to do any more than we get a hundred percent out of what our brains are designed to do right mm -hmm. so you'd put those two pieces of information together and that's where acupuncture now becomes at least a credible possibility in people's minds right mm -hmm. but when you think about this the fact that acupuncture helps us squeeze more good out of what nature gave us it not only sets you up to be able to explain you know why sticking needles in people could help you know a long list of potential problems it also helps you to explain to your patients what acupuncture can and cannot treat it also helps you explain to patients why it may take you know uh, different periods of time and different numbers of treatments to help different types of problems or to help different people mm -hmm. with even the same problems because some people have more or less resources available to them, right? And it also helps us to explain why acupuncture research has been so fraught with mm. difficulties. I was just gonna bring that up now. I know we're, we're jumping a little bit, but I was just right. gonna bring that up because I, I was thinking, ah, here we go now. That's and that right. is, isn't it, trying to, trying to put it in, in, in a box of, let's give you X amount and see what happens. Right. And then the same thing has to happen to the, you know, enough number of people to say, oh, here's the validity. Right. At the end of the day, you have so many people coming into the clinics that after their treatment, it, it's, so, it's so good to hear the, uh, oh, I, that, I feel better. Right, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's truly amazing. And you see, with research, again, because virtually all of modern medicine not 100%, but 90, 98% of it anyway, has always been about the body is failing us. We have to step in with our man-made interventions, yeah. right? Uh, and the, the research system that we set up to study medicine was set up to study medicine coming in to take over for the body. Yeah. And when you ask and look to answer questions about how effective is a medical intervention when that medical intervention is something that is designed to take over for the body and to do something you know not natural and and man-made into the body mm. it's much easier to it's a much more narrow window that you're focused on does this drug do this thing chemically in the body or does this surgical procedure you know does it does it open the artery and let more blood in or whatever the case may be? Mm. That's a very straightforward question to, to, to try to ask and answer. But when you are trying to study a therapy whose goal is to squeeze a little more good out of what the body is already trying to do to help itself, that is a vastly more complex question yeah. because with acupuncture, we don't even necessarily know exactly what good it is we're trying to squeeze out of the body. Yeah. You know, we're not telling the body, hey, you need to, produ to, uh, to produce 10% uh, more 
you know, adenosine or some kind of anti-inflammatory. Mm. We're not trying to turn those knobs exactly. We are basing it traditionally on qi balance, but we don't exactly know exactly what chemical change we are trying to make. So how do you focus in on that, right? It's, it's a very difficult question to ask and answer. Mm. And I believe one of the big mistakes we've made in researching acupuncture is we didn't start off recognizing that we're trying to actually trace a very complicated question, way more complicated than we're used to with outside interventions. Mm. And, and that is one mm. of the reasons why you know, we've never been faced with the idea of trying to study a therapy whose job it was to squeeze a little bit more good out of the body. I, I one time wrote a blog post uh, or a Facebook post or something, and it sounded like off the wall, but, but I compared acupuncture trying to, to understand how acupuncture works or if it works is kind of like the idea of cloud seeding, you know, how they, how mm. they try to make it rain, mm. right? Mm. Because I, I ran across on several occasions, I just happened to, to run across debates in the scientific community over whether cloud seeding works at all or not. Mm. And the thing that struck me about it was it was exactly like all the stuff I'd read for years about acupuncture research. <laughs> you know, one group of experts saying, ha, we proved that it works. Yeah. And another group of experts looking at the same research saying, oh, we proved that it doesn't work. Mm. Why, is, why do I say that acupuncture is somewhat like cloud seeding? Mm. Because with cloud seeding, you're trying to see whether you can make something in nature do something that nature already does. Yeah. But it may not have done it unless you help to nudge it, right? Yeah. Yeah. So how do you prove that your nudge made it do it? You know, mm. if you look at cloud seeding, it's like, well, if it really works, shouldn't it work every time you do it? Well, mm -hmm. no, nobody in cloud seeding that believes in it is saying that it would do it every time yeah. that you try it. Um, if you if you do cloud seeding and it rains, then the, the skeptics will say, well, it was going to rain anyway. It wasn't yeah. your, your, your seeding that made it happen. So it's a way more difficult question mm. when you're trying to figure out whether you do something in a complex natural system and, and you help it to do something that it's already trying to do or maybe inclined to do. And you're trying to figure out whether that nudge that you gave made the difference in it doing that thing or doing it more efficiently, mm. often in the case, in our case, that's a completely different subject to study. Yeah. And, and one that in natural sciences, we see people sometimes have a lot of trouble with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, it's, it, it, it happens all the time. I'm sure that there in, in, in the US with, with MDs, it's the same thing. But some of the, some of the GPs, because here we tend to call them general practitioners, would have that issue. And a lot of the times they would say that, you know, well, it was going to happen anyway. And probably you helped because, you know, you were a little bit more personal and everything. And I always right. said, like, but how that's not exclusive to me. You can be personal right. too. You don't need to just give eight minutes or 10 minutes to each of the patients that comes in. And, and again, going back to, you know, being a little bit more personal, the reason why, like what, one of the ways that we're hit at, at, because, oh, well, you know, your research, you know, you can't really do it because your treatments are so individualized. You go, well, but that's who we are treating. We are treating right. the individual. So, right. Why, why asking us to change what we do just to prove to you that it works according to your rules? Right. You know, like it's this, you know, I'm doing the master's degree. So it's really, really strange because I see some of the studies that compare interventions of acupuncture with nothing. And I go, yeah, I love that one. But right. then I get them, them going, no, 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 hang on a minute. You can't just do that. But you go, well, there's, <laughs> you know, talking about the sham acupuncture and going on what you were saying about doing you know acupuncture or acupuncture or a sham acupuncture or nothing and going well there's no difference between acupuncture and and sham but, but you're doing something it's not inactive it's not right. it, it's not you doing nothing so well that that whole issue you i think you know sandro is is my biggest complaint with mm. acupuncture research mm. well i brought and, it about because i know you like talking about it <laughs> well i it, it's it's actually a almost 
in, insane, almost like a farce sort of thing. Mm. I mean, if, if you really think about this, mm. what's happening with these sham design acupuncture trials is um, it is being mm. interpreted to answer the question about whether traditional acupuncture theories, which have been around in different guises, but basically mm -hmm. under very similar theories, has been around for much more than 2,000 years. Here mm -hmm. we have a practice that's been, been done every day, every day for more than 2,000 years. Mm -hmm. this, this medical procedure has been employed on people and animals. Well, maybe not whole every day for 2,000 years, but you know what I mean. But, but there, yeah, it's yeah. been used on people and animals for, for 2,000 years. Mm. And we are today essentially saying, but we're going to look back and look at this and see mm. if there's anything really uh, biologically active, anything really legitimately uh, true that's happening with these theories that have been done for all this time. And so we're going to set up these experiments and we're going to, we're going to try to set up some kind of placebo like uh, inactive control and then compare that to acupuncture done under traditional theories, mm -hmm. right? That's, that's what's happening here. And, and these studies are, are being interpreted and people are saying, either see there it must only be placebo because the real acupuncture does not consistently outperform sham at a high enough level to be considered mm. statistically significant mm. or in some cases clinically significant and then other people look at this and say well no we believe there's something biologically happening it's not just the placebo effect but it doesn't seem to matter where the needles are placed so there is some non-contextual sort of, uh, you know, it is, it, or it's, it is a contextual sort of thing. It's not really that the needles specifically in the right points do something. It's putting needles anywhere causes something, maybe some natural pain relievers or something like that to happen. So it's not just placebo, but it doesn't seem that none of the traditional theories seem to matter, right? Mm -hmm. Now, so this is what's, been happening and is is happening in, in continues to happen in a in a big way for acupuncture research but here's the part of it that is so so frustrating and, and really uh, completely illogical and that is you are trying to test what is called real acupuncture against what is called sham acupuncture and to ask and answer this question about whether real acupuncture is legitimate at all, basically. Mm. But the fact of the matter is, there is no standard for what constitutes sham acupuncture. Yeah. Sham acupuncture is all over the chart. Mm -hmm. All of these studies that call what they do sham acupuncture, it's not like they're all doing the same thing following Absolutely. some kind of consensus agreement. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like if you go to study a drug, like say you're going to study a, a pain relieving drug and you're going to try to test it against a placebo. Mm -hmm. And in some of the studies, maybe you use a sugar pill and in other studies you use for your control In other studies you use vitamin C mm -hmm. In another study you use a, a, a small amount of, of an NSAID mm -hmm. and in another study you use a small amount of an opiate. And, and you're all doing these different controls, supposedly, to test whether the real thing actually works. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people understand that about acupuncture research, and the, the acupuncture research community has been saying for years that these sham controls, that these controls are not biologically inactive, mm -hmm. they're not legitimate controls, and so we really shouldn't be using these studies with them. And I completely agree with that. But the part that I've been trying to raise awareness of, that, that not many people, although we are starting to see it come out of China, definitely, and there, there actually has been hints of this in Western research, but the truth of the matter is, Sandro, there is no, just like there isn't any agreed upon 
uh, consensus about what constitutes sham acupuncture. There is no agreed upon consensus of what constitutes real acupuncture. True. I mean, one of the, the things that I'm the most vocal about is um, the number of treatments that are done in these studies. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, everybody knows in China, they treat every day or every other day mm -hmm. in the beginning of a treatment process. They often do dozens of treatments. Mm -hmm. In the vast majority of acupuncture research trials, you see numbers completely all over the chart. Yeah. Some, some research, some research trials that are actually used today to ask and answer this question about whether at real acupuncture outperforms sham, whether this 2000 year old therapy is legitimate or not. Some of the trials used in these systematic reviews only did one acupuncture treatment. Yeah. Yeah. Some of them only did three acupuncture treatments. And then other ones maybe do six, eight, 12, 18, 24, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now, these are often brought in under these, these random controlled trials. These, are, these individual RTCs are often brought in under systematic reviews, yeah. which is considered the gold standard of figuring yeah. out whether something really works. Yeah. But you would never have a systematic review of a drug where, first of all, there was no standardization of the placebo control yeah. and, and the drug dosage was given yeah. in completely different dosages. Absolutely. Sometimes even, you know, to the magnitude of 20 or plus times more or less of the dosage of the drug. Yeah. Yeah. But that is what's happening with, with acupuncture studies. There is no consensus about there. There's really no consensus about point selection. Uh, but there is especially no consensus about the number of times those points need to be needled. Mm. And anybody that's a real, truly successful, full-time practicing practitioner knows that one of the greatest struggles we have with our patients is getting them enough treatments to be as effective as we can be. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we often see patients like you're treating a patient and you're, you're seeing them start to do better and better and better. And then for whatever reason, they don't come in or you have to stretch out the treatments because of financially. And you see them start to backslide and you see their progress start to revert. And then, mm -hmm. and then you do a few more treatments closer together and you get them moving forward again. Yeah. So we see this dynamic about the number of treatments uh, you know, happening all the time clinically. Uh, and the Chinese... Uh, deal with that by just doing a, a lot of frequent treatments to make sure that they're not under treating, right? So I believe under treating is a rampant problem mm -hmm. in the way acupuncture is being studied. When you're setting up a study to, to really truly try to ask and answer this question about whether real acupuncture outperforms sham, then you are duty bound to do enough treatments to give the real acupuncture a yeah. chance to do everything it can do. Yeah. And that clearly is not happening. Mm. So, you know, I, I believe that it is the single biggest key that is making acupuncture, making real acupuncture underperform mm. in many of these studies. Now, we, the Acupuncture Now Foundation set out, you know, two years ago, we tried to recruit a bunch of volunteers to help us go through all these studies and try to pick out the ones that had enough treatments that then we could contrast them to the other ones that use fewer treatments yeah. to see if we would see a, an increase in the efficacy, the degree that the real outperformed the sham. And we do have reason to believe that that is the case. We do see it in, in a handful of trials. But the problem is, problem is trying to get, gather enough volunteers to do this huge job without any money behind us. Mm -hmm. um, but the other problem is, um, there, there just aren't many well done Western trials that have used enough treatments mm -hmm. that we even have a chance of doing this comparison for. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I'm working on and trying to work with others on is, at very least, we should be able to raise this issue to get some kind of consensus to say 
there, there is no excuse for having the disparity in treatment frequency we see between the way it's done in China and some other places like Korea mm -hmm. and the way it's being done in the West. You, there's no, when you see the huge difference in the treatment frequencies, mm. that has to be a red flag saying, wait a second, mm. how do we know that these lower frequencies are allowing the real acupuncture to do yeah. its thing, right? So that's the second point. Mm -hmm. The third point is, there is no agreed upon standard consensus for the training of the acupuncturist doing these studies. In the study, yeah. Here again, the, the people sticking the needles in, mm -hmm. what is their training? Here again, we see a huge disparity mm -hmm. between what often happens in these studies where like, for example, in Germany, you know, a, a lot of the studies that are being cited the most come out of Germany because they have um, a robust system for being able to study this because they have a lot of medical doctors in these bigger clinics that practice acupuncture. And so they have the, treat they have the patient numbers and they have the access to the, uh, to the providers that they can go and do these studies, and that's fantastic. Um, but one of the problems is that these are m mainly being done by medical doctors that add acupuncture on as, a, as another tool in their tool belt. Now, many of the people will say, ah, but these, these physicians, they do meet the, the World Health Organization standard for what is it? Minimal training. Minimal training, yeah. Right? The, th the 300 hours that the World Health Organization has said medical doctors could practice acupuncture with 300 hours of training, but that is considered minimal training. To, for medical doctors to get full time training, and I'm sorry I forget the exact hours, but I know it's close to 2,000, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So wait a second, 300 minimal to 2,000 full, right? Yeah. And then again, when we look at the training that, that acupuncturists receive in, in China or Korea, we see you know uh, many more hours. Yeah. When you look at the training that a lot of acupuncture specialists in the West have, we have got our training standards up to much more than 300 hours mm -hmm. above Western medicine mm -hmm. that, that physicians with minimal training. So here we have, studies that are being designed to ask and answer the question whether this therapy that's been used on you know hundreds of millions by now billions of people over 2000 years whether it's legitimate and we design these studies with no standardization for the control yeah. no standardization of the active therapy to be studied and no standardization for the training of the people performing this mm -hmm. highly technical procedure Mm -hmm. Now that is the truth. Nobody mm -hmm. can, I don't believe anybody can argue that what I just said is not the state of affairs. Mm -hmm. We have this huge discrepancy about how acupuncture is practiced uh, or can be practiced. Mm -hmm. So it, we should be able to reach consensus to say, you know what, we don't really have a firm ground to make a determination about whether real acupuncture does or doesn't outperform sham. Mm -hmm. Until we standardize the control and standardize the real uh, therapy being studied and standardize the training of the people doing it, mm -hmm. uh, uh, we're, we're on completely shaky ground here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so that was the first of the segments that I will be bringing to you. Uh, the interview with Matthew was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, so I'm going to break it down because, as I said to you, there's going to be bits that will be more relevant for patients and others that will be more relevant for practitioners. So I will break it down, and um, I hope you enjoyed this one. Please follow the links below. There's links there to the Acupuncture Now Foundation. Um, there's links to the, uh, the their their um, their project, getting to the point, the the, the film. So. It, all the information is down in the description area. Uh, if you want to know more about Matthew and the organization as well, just I'm going to leave everything down there, so you can just click on those and please give us give us your feedback. Um, there's always the possibility of just getting Matthew to come along and just uh, answer a few questions if you have them, or you can, we can just have them answered on the um, on either either on our website when we publish the um, the, the video on the uh, on on the, the relevant section. Um, so. 
If you have any questions, please send them over. Um, as you've been doing so far, suggestions for future videos, send those to us as well. We'd love to, uh, we'd love to get your feedback. It's, it's, it's been phenomenal. And we hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. And we look forward to bringing you more of it. So until next time, be kind and be healthy. Oh, baloney. The whole thing always gets back to drugs.